Now we're going to look at double interpolation. So what we see here is that we've got a bunch of data in blue and the uh, x-axis would be those numbers on the left-hand so uh, column in red and the y values would be the uh, green row on the top. Uh, notice we have a buffer row because in order to do this kind of interpolation we need to look beyond the data and uh, we don't want to run off the edge of the cliff basically. So let's start here and uh, let's say we have instead of a number that's right on one of those uh, numbers we'll have ones that are slightly off and we can interpolate and get the value of the blue number that would be the most appropriate. So let's say instead of uh, uh, somewhere between 18 and 20 we'll choose 19 for the red and on the green axis we'll choose 80 which is close to 85 but not quite. So what we do have here is we're going to have a little box of numbers that surround uh, 19 and 80. We're just going to put a border on just to show you that's the box we're going to try to pick uh, a, a more exact value out of using double interpolation. So now we're going to apply the match function in order to find the uh, numbers that we need. So we're going to match, find out what row the number 19 is greater than <clears throat> or equal to. And if you look at this column, so we're going to see where is 19 and we're looking in this array. So if we count down from the top, we see that it's greater than 18 but not as great as 20. So number 3 is the column, I mean sorry, is the row of that matrix it's in. And we could use match a second time to find out what column matches 80. And you see after the fifth column you have 50 and the sixth column is 85 which is greater than 80. So the number of the column is the 5. So we're going to look up in that array. And we want that type of search that last one means it's called a less than search. So it, it follows that pattern I was describing. <clears throat> so we see that the top uh, corner of our box is going to be row 3, column 5. So that's the one that reads 0.315 right there. It's uh, F4 if you're following along. So now we're going to look at an index to figure out how to put the size of the box there. And we're going to go down into our uh, extra uh, buffer region if we have to and we're going to find out what is the value in the third row. Well that would be 18 and we call them one because it's a single column matrix right. So uh, we have an 18 there and we're going to find out that the next uh, member of that uh, column matrix is 20. So we're just going to say we're going to have the row index that we just found add one to it, meaning the next one, and for the oh, first column, first and only column, right? And there it is, 18 and 20. So we're forming a, like a little box as if we got rid of everything except the numbers that we're interested in. So we're going to do this same thing with the row on top. So we're going to say that we want to look at that, uh, that array, the green array with the little buffer region on the end. We want it to. Uh, we want to look at the uh, first row and the fifth column, uh, and try that again here. We're going to look at index again, and we're going to look in, like I said, first row because it's a single row matrix, and column plus one. So that's the fifth. So you see, we've got the red and green parts of our of our little uh, box. Now we need to find the the blue versions. So now we're going to take the index of this entire of all of the blue data. That's the array we're going to look at this time. And we're going to go with row 3 column 5. There you go. Have to uh change the fonts a little bit so we can see more more digits. So we're going to just 
see see more digits make sure that we're getting the right numbers these this is the 0.315 now we need the next one so that would be the same row but one column over so you look at this exact same array all the blue data and you get the same row and then the column plus one and you'll have that 325 which is the uh, top right of the little box now the seventh time we're going to use the index is to get the lower left corner of the box so that's going to be the next row plus one and that first column <clears throat> and finally we get the lower right hand corner and I hope now that you see that we're adding one to these rows and index that's why we need to make that buffer uh, column and row so you don't run off the edge of the earth uh, by doing that because buffer overflows are just bad news they make things crash and you don't like them so you see it's in the row plus one column plus one and there you have it. and now we have our little box so now we go to use a new function uh, called forecast dot linear it's not really a new function it's it's new to a, a lot of engineers who would think of linear interpolation and never think about forecast.linear would be the value that they wanted. So, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to interpolate on the x value at the low and high value of y. So here we're going to do it for the low value of y. So we're going to interpolate the so between the uh, first column there, the 0.315 and the 0 0.330. We're going to figure out what should the value be for 19. So we're going to so we're going to get our forecast dot linear, <clears throat> and you'll see that the x that we're looking for is the 19 over here, and the known values of y are in the chart. They're the first column the 315 and the 330 yeah and the known X's are the 18 and the 20 over here so that is the you'll see it's halfway between 315 and 330 just like 19 is halfway between 18 and 20 <clears throat> see we need more digits there we go with the more digits you see we've got we've split the difference okay so we're gonna do this again at the high value. So we're going to see what's halfway between the 0.325 and the 0 0.340. So 19 is the x. This time for the known y's we're going to use the second column. And of course the known x's are still the same x's that we have from before. And finally we're going to end this by then interpolating those over the y value. So remember we have the y value of 80 so between 3225 and 3325 where would 80 be uh, if that's between 50 and 85 so we're going to use uh, 80 is going to be the number we're looking at now in this case the known y's are the values there <clears throat> and the known x's are the uh, values of y from previous and there it is, 0 0.33107. So now we've done double interpolation, and you can be fairly confident that it, it looks like it should work uh, correctly. And this is usually a nice way to get some values when you don't have a choice. Now, we're looking at some other things. That what happens if you hit 1,000 for the X? You'll notice that the, uh, uh, the buffer range is hit. Um, there it is, right below the, the 500 and the 512 there. Um, and let's say you go 40, 80. Let's say you're looking at, trying to look off to the right side. Um, you'll see in these at that row, the values are there. So you can see how you that buffer range keeps you from running off the end of the of the earth. So you'll notice that 1980 has a difference between 80 and 9 and 80 and 19. That has to do with the data that we're working with.